When does your interaction with her start? If you're going to walk up to a girl and meet her, when does that interaction begin? When is the relevant factors for, for that interaction starting? Any ideas? Yeah? The thought of it, like when you think about going over, yeah. maybe I would say earlier, yeah? When she's aware of you. When she's aware of you, I would say earlier, yeah? When you see her first. When you, when you see her first, okay, I would say earlier. Eye contact. Eye contact earlier? When you leave her, when you leave her earlier? <laughs> <laughs> Good though. Good, I like that, yeah? When I what? When I pull? When you're bored. When I'm bored? When I'm, when I'm bored? Did you say when I'm born? <laughs> kind of, yes. Kind of yes, actually, okay? So up into, uh, funny enough, every single one that you guys have said, that's actually the right, the, kind of the right answer in a weird way, but backwards. Um, but every answer you guys have said has to do with you. When you approach, you said when she notices you, so that has to do with you. When you leave the house, when you decide to whatever, when you get your mind right, what about her? Does she play no role in this? All right, an interaction takes two people, not just one. The interesting thing is every single answer you guys gave has to do with you. Now, I like his answer of when you're born. What I was actually going to say is the answer is when she's born, right? And actually, even before that, when her great-great-great-grandmother was born and started evolving to be the person that she is, is actually when it all started. Does that make sense? So the girl is someone before you walk up and approach her, and you're someone before you walk up and approach her, right? And the job of game, the job of pickup, is getting your someone acquainted with her someone in the right way, right? In order to do that, though, it's very important to know what her someone is, to know what the girl's all about. And I do think it's telling that every single answer was about the boy, about the guy, right? When does it start? It does start with you, and it is important to focus on your own stuff because that's the part you're most in control of. But it's very important to know who the girl is, what the girl is, that sort of a thing, all right? What I want to talk about sort of to, to be the base of everything, and when I think about game, this is the base of everything I'm thinking about, is um, what is female psychology? Where does it come from? What is the woman looking for in terms of everything? Um, so in answer to the trick question, when does it start? When you're born, when she is born, or technically when, when evolution started and made women and men the way they are. That's when your set began. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's talk about evolutionary psychology. How many people know what evolutionary psychology is, know some of the stuff? Like something like a quarter of the room, a third of the room, so a lot of like shaky hands, like I kinda know, maybe, like we came from apes and stuff, something like that, okay. All right, um, so evolutionary psych. All right, um, so basically, um, I'm not gonna give you the whole long, lengthy spiel. If you guys really wanna learn this stuff, I do recommend. Uh, read books like The Red Queen, uh, read books like The Moral Animal. If you want to read a book that will like totally blow your mind and make you distrust women forever and blow your hair back, um, read a book called Sperm Wars. Yeah. How many people have ever read that book, by the way? Oh, yeah, yeah that, is, that is a book that will like fucking knock you on your ass. It's fucking crazy. I mean, the, the, the general gist of that one is basically that, um, to, to kind of keep it quick, um, within your sperm, there are three different types of sperm. There's sperm that can impregnate the woman, sperm that can kill other men's sperm, and sperm that can bro block up her, her like canals so that other men's sperm can't get at her. <laughs> All right? And the idea is that a significant portion of men born, or men, people born in all of human history, were born as a result of competition between sperm inside the woman's vagina. Okay? Like legitimately actually true. All right? Um, but it talks about evolution and how that plays. It's fucking crazy. Anyway. We're not going to go that deep. We're not going to go like super crazy, and I'm not going to like try and make you distrust women tonight. So we're not going to go there. But um, let's talk about what women want. Um, and basically, there's two different things that women want in a man. Number one, they want the best man they can get, right? And what that means essentially is the man who would have survived the best on the savannas of Africa. Not necessarily the guy who you know makes the most money today or um, has the nicest car or nicest resume. It's the guy that would have survived on the savannas of Africa. That's number one. Number two, she wants a guy that'll stick around. She wants a guy that won't leave her deserted and pregnant on the savannas of Africa. Right? Now, the problem is that's a paradox. Okay? Because on the one hand, she wants a guy she essentially doesn't deserve. She wants a guy that's like better than her. Right? But she wants him to stick around. And how many people have heard of the theory of value and comfort? You guys heard this before? Okay. So value and comfort basically is this, like you need to have high value, be that like ideal guy on the savannah. On the other hand, you need to be the guy that, you know, she would believe you'd stick around, otherwise she won't trust you and won't want to like get pregnant with you or whatever, um, meaning have sex with you. 
Um, but the paradox is this. Everything you do that increases your value decreases her comfort level. Right? If you show that you could get 20 other women at this, like the drop of a hat, but you, know, you just won't. You just wouldn't cheat on her, just, you know, even though you could. Right? It, it doesn't like, make sense. It doesn't register. She'll just feel like you constantly would be. On the other hand, if you tell the girl, oh my god, I'd only you, baby, uh, I love you so much, I would never do anything, she's like, well, I appreciate that, I feel comfortable, but what, you don't have any options, loser? <laughs> right? So it's this weird, weird paradox that, that you're going through. And the way that women kind of solve the paradox, there's a lot of ways they solve the paradox. Um, one is to sort of like settle a bit to get like the best guy that they can keep around. So if a, guy, a girl's like, not to rate women and not to be misogynistic, but I'm going to rate women. Um, <laughs> If a girl's like a six or a seven in terms of her overall like package value or whatever, she probably wants a guy who's like about a seven or an eight, right? It's just a little bit higher. Like she's like, oh, I won, I overachieved, um, but not like a 10. A girl who's like a six does not want a guy who's like a 10 because she'll feel like he's gonna cheat on her 20 million times a day, right? And she will be worried constantly. Trust me, I've had this in my relationships, right? I've had this where girls are like, they love me to death, but they are constantly worried that every single second I'm away from them, I'm with 10 other girls. Like the, the fantasies that these girls come up with for what I'm doing, like I lead a pretty cool life, but in their heads, I am like fucking like James Bond meets like Dirk Diggler. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> All right, um, so the point is they, they don't want that. So one solution is you get a guy that's a few points higher than you, right? The other solution, the more nefarious solution, is you, um, as a woman, get married to the guy that's your level or slightly higher, and then you go and have a kid with the guy who is a 10, all right? That's the other solution. Or the other solution is you just have the kid with the guy who's a 10, and you say, fuck it, I'll deal with it, and try, hope, hope, cross your fingers and hope you survive on the savannas of Africa. So those are essentially like the three strategies, right? So that's why you have this like lover side, the provider side, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's very important to understand those things, because when the girl's evaluating you, when you walk up to the girl, um, she's putting you in a category immediately. She's immediately category, categorizing you as, is this the, the, like, the 10 guy that like, will cheat on me? Or is this the, like, the seven guy that'll stay around? Or is this some hybrid in the middle? How am I categorizing that? And she's looking for, um, to put you in a certain category and to put you in the right place in that category, otherwise she's not gonna sleep with you. And you can sleep with a girl, as the fun, crazy, adventure, sexy guy, for sure. You can sleep with a girl as the provider, take her on a whole bunch of dates guy, for sure, right? But if you end up somewhere weirdly in the middle, you might not. That makes sense? If you don't fit into the right, the right category, if there's not a good story in her mind for what's going on with you, how you fit in, what the sex means, that kind of stuff, it probably isn't gonna go down. So it's important to be aware of that distinction and how it all comes together. All right, so there's that. There's value and comfort. Where's your value? What's your caliber sort of as a man? The next thing is um, what you kind of said reversed from the day you were born, but no, from the day she was born. So from the moment the girl was born, she's been affected by society and by culture, right? She's been told, don't do that, that's slutty. She's been told, um, you know, dr wear dresses instead of playing with G.I. Joes. Like these different things that she's hearing over and over and over again that are influencing who she is and what she finds valuable. Um, and also culturally, right? A girl who is pretty her whole life is gonna be treated differently, raised differently than a girl who um, is sort of like the ugly duckling and then becomes pretty later, right? So there's all these cultural things. And um, this, this idea I put up here, this, this word mimetics, um, I'm not gonna go into it too deeply, um, but it's a brilliant, brilliant idea as well, which is the idea that it, ideas evolve. All right, in the same way that we physically evolved, ideas evolve. So um, one example would be, um, I, I hope I don't offend anybody's culture with what I'm gonna say, but I'm just gonna deal with it. Um, one, one idea is that there are a lot of cultures around the world, um, not just one or two, but many, many, um, that historically have said, like, don't eat pork, right? That's a very common thing in a lot of cultures, uh, a lot of religions as well, don't eat pork, right? Um, and if you look at that, um, it seems kind of like, if you look at it in terms of evolution, if you take like a completely secular view, assume like it's not actually whatever religious, um, just say to, for the society, why would a society benefit from having that in their religion? What would happen there? Well, it turns out that historically, pigs tended to carry more diseases than other animals that were raised as livestock. So people that you know, ate pork in their culture had more death and more disease than cultures that didn't eat pork. 
right? And so therefore, any sort of religious ideology or cultural ideology that had don't eat pork as part of the religion, their people survived and thrived and had more babies than the people who didn't. And so those ideas evolved and propagated. Does that make sense? Okay, um, and that's just one example, but a very, like, to a ridiculous degree, the ideas that shape our culture, you can look at them in terms of that, in terms of how did they come to be, how did they evolve, where did they come from, that kind of stuff, right? So that's just one sort of a thing. But look at, for a second, um, the ideas about, um, about women, about women and sexuality, where that comes from. Why is it that things like slut shaming exist? Where does that come from? Well, Long time ago, um, getting pregnant uh, was kind of a rough thing for women, right? Um, imagine, again, savannas of Africa, or imagine like, you know, uh, like 1000 AD, not very good medicine, that kind of stuff. Getting pregnant's a pretty big commitment, right? Potentially a lot of women died during childbirth. Um, kids, if they didn't have proper resources, died in the first few years of life, all kinds of things like that. So it was very, very important for women to be very, very selective about who they got pregnant by. Right? Nowadays, you know, we have condoms, we have plan B, we have all kinds of shit, right? But, so it doesn't matter quite as much, it's not quite as dire. But back then, absolutely, brutally critical. If you had a, a daughter, you do not want her getting pregnant too early. You do not want her getting pregnant by the wrong man. And so there's a strong cultural incentive to um, create a society where women aren't going to do that kind of stuff. Right? So slut shaming, Right? actually probably helped society survive, thrive, grow, prosper, all those kind of things. Right? Nowadays, it's just kind of like a nasty thing that women have to go through like in their 13-year-old like, you know, years and stuff. But understand that it all came from somewhere. Right? It all came from somewhere. It all has a legitimate basis, right? and it all kind of helped at a certain point. Um, and it's kind of inevitable that that would be the case. Right? And so you can look culturally throughout Western civilization, Eastern civilization, pretty much everywhere you're gonna go, there's gonna be some degree of the girl not wanting to necessarily be perceived of as easy, uh, ruin her reputation, all those kind of things. So that's another factor you need to be very, very aware of that's gonna be pervasive throughout just about any girl you talk to, right? So it's not just about being a guy of a certain caliber if you wanna sleep with girls, it's about giving a girl a certain experience and a certain process along the way. Right? And that process, if at any point it makes her feel slutty about herself, you're probably going to derail the process right then and there. If it makes her look slutty in front of her friends, you're probably going to derail the process right then and there. Does that make sense? Yes? Does everybody kind of get it? Yes. Right? Okay, so just going into this, it's not just like, how many people have ever heard like, you know, just go get in a good state, self-amuse, and just like go with it? So that's kind of, yeah, you hear that a lot, right? Well, that's great to a point. It's great to a point, and we'll talk later about why that's actually effective. There, there is a lot of value in that, and that is very effective to a point. But if you're self-amusing and getting yourself in a great state, and then you're putting a girl through experience that feels slutty for her, you're going to immediately shut the process down. Right? Or if you're self-amused and happy and having fun and, and conveying positive vibes, but you're putting yourself in the wrong category of guy, a category of guy she doesn't like, evolutionarily respond to or want to like, have the genetics of, that's not going to work either. Like a, a lot of guys will self-amuse and they'll say a lot of self-deprecating humor, a lot of negative humor about themselves. Well, they're getting attention, they're fun, they're engaging, but the picture they're painting for the girl is not the picture of a sex-worthy guy. Okay? So it's very important to understand what you're conveying. And in fact, almost everything that you get taught in game, I think of it as like a means to an end rather than the end itself. Right? The end is the story in the girl's head of who you are. The picture she has of you, and is that a picture that she you know, can see herself sleeping with? So why do, you do, why do you tease the girl? It's partly to get her attention, partly to make it fun, partly to convey that you're a sex-worthy guy and you're abundant, that kind of stuff. Right? But if in teasing the girl you make her feel slutty, you've ruined it. Right? If in teasing the girl you're coming from a low-value place that makes her think you're a scrub, you've ruined it. All right? So again, it's all just a means to an end. Um, and so this is the idea of memetics. If you guys want to read a really great book, this is a highly recommended book on memetics, um, I would recommend a book called Non-Zero um, by a guy named Robert Wright. He basically explains how um, the entire history of the world and like society, politics, all that kind of stuff, it all essentially comes from non-zero exchanges, meaning exchanges where like value is created. 
right? Instead of there being a winner and a loser, there's, there's a net win between two people. And basically, the entire history of humanity, you can look at it as like the history of creating more net wins. Um, anyway, it's a really brilliant book, um, but it talks about this idea of memetics. And it, after reading that book, you will understand like society and why it works and what laws will pass and, and what's going to happen legal, like to a level that you wouldn't even imagine. So highly, highly recommend it. Um, check out that topic. Um, but for this speech, just know that women are under certain pressure societally, and those are very, very predictable. OK, uh, if you want to go advanced with this, you can even, so what, I told, what I've told you so far is kind of what is the general female blueprint. What are women dealing with in general? They want a guy who's high value, but at the same time, a guy they're comfortable with. They want some level of connection and trust. At the same time, they want a guy who fits a certain social narrative for them, doesn't make them feel slutty, um, doesn't mess with their position in the world too badly. Right? But every woman's a little bit different. Every woman's a little bit different. Um, I'll pick on someone. Who wants to be a volunteer to be picked on for a second? Raise your hand. All right, you. All right. Um, so question for you. Say that uh, you're out one night, and you see a girl, and she is blonde, fake tits, tight dress, brightly colored dress, nice heels, um, hair like straightened, tossing her head, giggling with her friends out at a nightclub. Like looks like just like super bombshell hot, all right? Um, when you go walk up to her, are you gonna approach in that nightclub more high energy or more low energy? Typically. Me medium, in the middle somewhere. Me medium, okay, if you had to err on the side of one or the other, if you had to answer the question instead of sitting on the fence. <laughs> Would you go more high energy or lower energy for that particular girl, that particular approach? It depends on the circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> wow, all right. So you would sit on the fence and sit against the wall and not approach. You'd be like, it depends. I don't know what to do. I'll think about it indefinitely and then decide. Uh, high energy. High energy. Yeah. Good, good, good. I agree. Um, high energy. Okay. When you tease this girl, um, are you going to tease like more soft and nice or are you going to tease a little more harsh, typically? Yeah, it's got to be a bit harsh. A bit harsh. Okay, cool. Um, and in terms of what you're trying to convey about yourself, are you trying to convey that you're like the shit and amazing, or are you trying to convey that you're a nice, sweet, kind, sensitive man? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Good. I like it. Do you guys agree with him? Yeah. I do too. All right. Um, now, second question. You see another girl. This girl is, um, doesn't look like she's from, from the UK. She looks like she's like a, a recent immigrant of some kind. Um, she's wearing sort of like more muted colored casual clothing, sitting in the park. Uh, wearing glasses, reading a book, um, and the book's not in English. Right? It's in whatever foreign uh, country she came from's language. Okay? Now you're going to walk up to that girl. Are you going to approach more high energy or low energy? High energy. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Sa sa same energy as low energy? Yeah, it's going to be a different. Okay, different as compared to the last one, lower energy. Okay, fair enough. Um, with that girl, are you going to tease more super harsh, or are you going to be a little like softer and nicer in your teasing? Yeah, softer, and softer and nicer. And when you convey yourself to her, are you going to convey that you're just super supreme badass, or are you going to convey that you're kind of like a nice, sweet, chill guy? Yeah, nice. nice, sweet, and chill. Awesome. Cool. Everything you just said is incredibly racist. Congratulations. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Good, good, good. I, I completely agree, though. I completely agree, and that is the intelligent way to do those two approaches, right? So what are you talking about right now? You're talking about the blueprints of the specific girls, okay? You're talking about actually understanding what is the likely life history of this girl. Was she treated in a certain way by her parents? Was she treated a certain way by society, right? Uh, also, you're looking at her choices. Did she choose to wear a tight, revealing dress and get fake, fake tits, or did she choose to... Um, wear muted colors and sit in the park reading a uh, book? Did she choose to wear glasses rather than contacts? Right? All these different things are indicators. They're telling you who the girl is that you're talking to. Right? And if you go up, and I see a lot of guys do this that learn, learn pickup, they go up and they blindly approach every girl the same way. Right? It's like, uh, do you guys know what the word algorithm means? You guys know that word? Right? It's like a computer process. It's like execute program A, then execute program B, then do C. Right? A lot of guys view game as an algorithm. They're going to go up and they're going to execute this, like, I don't want to say execute the program because it sounds like I'm making fun of something that I'm not, right? <laughs> but they go up and they want to execute their algorithm um, on every single girl in exactly the same way. And it's just not going to work because the girl's a little bit different as he's told us, right? Um, so that's the next level is figuring out what the particular blueprint of the girl is, okay? Um, the major point I want you to take from all this, though, first takeaway, 
is that game is not just about you, it involves a girl, right? And so as, as a part of that, it's important to think about who is the girl, what is, what is uh, the experience of being a girl in general, what is the experience of this particular girl, and what is the girl most likely looking for and thinking of, okay? Very, very important that that not get lost in the overall sort of schema of what is game. All right? And I think that because we're so focused on our own actions and so focused on like maybe even in our head and nervous at first when we're approaching girls, it's very easy to be very self-centered in the way we, we look at things. And that will only get you to a certain level. Right? You can get from beginner to intermediate by being very self-centered in game. But if you want to get from intermediate to advanced, if you want to get to a really high level, at some point game is interactive and you do need to think about the woman. And if on a fundamental level, you haven't learned a game that's interactive, there's gonna be a cap on how good you can get.